are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to Art Talks, a community show about artists and art and their processes of creativity. I'm Joanne Bauer, the host of Art Talks, and I have three guests with me this evening. Before I actually introduce my guests, I want to come back to something that I talked about the past two months. In October and November, we had guests here who were promoting Open Studio Hartford. And Open Studio Hartford happened November 16th and 17th, and by all accounts, it was quite successful. And in fact, my guests, two of my guests, three, all three of my guests this evening had some participation in Open Studio Hartford. So they might have some things that they would like to say specifically about that event. But we, I would say that we have had more than 200 artists all around Hartford and in, in fact there was one site that was called the West Hardison site and that was in West Hartford and uh, this took place in over 18 venues in the city so art is happening and we're all a buzz about that mm -hmm. I also want to mention the West Hartford Art League because we are here in West Hartford. The West Hartford Art League has a holiday party show coming up with small works and an ornament sale. And in fact, our friend Steve Fournier, who was on the show several months ago and oftentimes helps us with camera work, he's here tonight. He will likely have a piece in the small work show. The opening for the West Hartford Art League holiday party is Wednesday, December 4th from 7 to 9 p.m. And you can, of course, go on to their website, which is westhartfordart.org, to find out about their upcoming exhibits. They have their annual juried photography exhibit coming up that's called Exposures, and that will be in January. And a juried fiber art exhibit will also be coming up in the new year in February. That's called Out of the Loop. And they have the Connecticut Watercolor Society exhibit starting on December 8th, Sunday, December 8th, and that's all at the West Hartford Art League on Buena Vista Road. Then, what? let's see, one other thing that I want to emphasize is that two of our guests are involved with the University of Hartford, which is our West Hartford connection, mm -hmm. seeing as it's the University of Hartford, but its, it's ad address is actually in West Hartford, Connecticut. So I would like to introduce my guests. First, we have Mala Madison, who is an associate professor at the university. And next to her is Joseph R. Gornal, Jr. And he's a realistic and uh, abstract artist. And we'll talk a bit about the influence of pop art with him. And he's brought with him this evening Jerry Great, who's the owner of the tobacco shop in Hartford on Pratt Street. And we'll talk about the connection. Jerry is able to exhibit artists in Hartford. And uh, well, not necessarily, they don't have to be Hartford artists, but you're there on Pratt Street sure. as an alternative spot. And so we'll all chat about the art scene. Mala, I want to start with you. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a bit. You have brought with you some calendars. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about this project of yours, because I know this has been going on for five years. Yes. It's very exciting. I think it's exciting, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's an anniversary of sorts, five years. That's so. right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any project that can continue on for five years, yeah. you have to celebrate it, right? right? Absolutely. Right. So you have students who have been involved in this, and I, and I want to really emphasize the creativity of mm -hmm. 
of the production and, and the creation and even the concept of your alternative calendars. Sure. Um, so I'm part of an organization called Women for Change at the University of Hartford. Um, and the organization actually came out of a class of mine that was, um, we bonded. <laughs> so this class actually, I mean, imagine a class where you don't want to leave. And these young women and I actually really, really connected um, closely. And we didn't want to leave each other. And so and that was five <laughs> years ago. That actually was six more. No, more that than... was actually in 2008. Mm -hmm. Um, and part of that was creating this, this organization on campus called Women for Change. And the idea is that this was a, a course called Women Wait and Worry. Um, it was a course on body image. And um, let's spell out the word wait because it's not W-A-I-T. <laughs> right, it's W-E-I-G-H-T. So it's a course on, um, on, on body image, on weight, on how women feel about themselves. But underlying that is really much more, a much more serious issue, which is to look at our culture and how we're um, built on a, a patriarchal culture, right, mm -hmm. and, and how that actually affects women. Mm -hmm. So leaving that class, we, um, this, this calendar really came from this idea that as a student, organ we weren't even a student organization on campus oh, yet, so and we needed to make some money. So, <laughs> so we decided what, you know, what can we do as an organization to, we were just becoming an, an organization on campus, um, what can we do? And so we thought, at that time, the Dove Campaign for Real Beauty was really big, right? right? Where women of different sizes and shapes were saying, we are really beautiful the, the way we are in all different shapes and sizes. That's right. And that's certainly a message that is, um, that I love to promote. And that's Dove Soap, right? Dove, yes, the, pro yeah, the products. Right. That, mm -hmm. um, and so we decided, wow, what if we did sort of a calendar that promoted all different uh, diversity of women in terms of weight, in terms of age, in terms of, of color, in terms of gender, in terms of sexual orientation? Why don't we do something like that? Um, and so that's actually how the calendar got started. And prior to that was a film, right? You know, you probably know the film I'm talking about, which was about an alternative calendar yes, also. Yes, yes. It was um, Calendar Girls. Okay, yeah, calendar right, girls. right, right. Was <laughs> Helen Marin in that? Yes, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, and that was a great film. So uh, we thought, okay, let's just do it. Let's like, so we didn't, and I actually do not have a background in art. I, right. you know, I, don't really know much about um, the creation of this. So I actually had to learn well, a lot. Wait a second, though. I want to <laughs> say that you're very visual and you also I, sell jewelry, make and sell jewelry. So we're going to come back okay, and perhaps okay, we'll have a chance right. to Yeah, talk I didn't about. know. I'm, I'm very, very uh, left brain. I'm, very, I'm an academic, right? And all of a sudden, years ago, I discovered I had another part of my brain. So <laughs> I, I do use my whole brain. Um, and yeah, so there is a part, right, about this that is very creative. Absolutely, it's absolutely creative, and and it, it requires design and and right. and then and photography and, and photography, and, and you do writing. the photography, right? A lot you of do, the photography, you do a lot of right. the photography, um, and then the writing, as as you mentioned to me, and as I know, because I I should say that I've been in yes, three of the calendars, <laughs> right? The the writing that the participants do is also extremely creative, and. Perhaps, I know we can talk about the current one, but it, sure. is, are there things that you want to say about the earlier versions, too? I know you've brought some with you. Sure. Well, each one, I mean, the, the idea that, um, you know, each year the e-board and I, and you can see from the very, very first one, there was only, you know, there was only like five of us. Um, but it grows each year, and the idea is that, you know, we always lie in a circle, because a circle... Um, has a connotation that there's there's no one above anyone else. So we're a really, really, um, we're an organization that's very feminist based. And the idea mm -hmm. around feminism, right, is that there's equality. And so we always lie in a circle. So this is our, our cover looks very similar every single year. But in each cover has a theme, right? right We've right. got a theme going on. And, and, and which was your first theme? Was the that very, very first theme was asking women, uh, was beauty is. And okay. we asked every woman, well, what is beauty? Mm -hmm. And the idea was that, um, you know, our, our idea actually behind these calendars was to challenge traditional, was to challenge mm -hmm. traditional beauty, mm -hmm. right? Because most of the time women are seen very unidimensionally, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at magazines or in advertisements or on television, women are portrayed in a very, very one-dimensional way, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. In a very sexualized manner. Mm -hmm. So our idea was, can women portray themselves in the way they want to be portrayed and have their voice? So yes. every single picture in here 
asks women to be photographed in, in the way they want to be photographed and have their story. So for example, in, in, in this picture, we asked women, well, what do you define as beauty? Mm -hmm. And they filled in the blank, beauty is, for me, this woman said, beauty is believing in yourself. Wonderful. Beauty is being yourself. Being yourself. Wonderful. And are, the, <clears throat> are those both students on that page? Yeah, this is a graduate <clears throat> student. This was an undergraduate student. Mm -hmm. But we also have um, community members mm -hmm. every single year. Um, and this year actually is our largest calendar. So this was our first one. We didn't know whether we would get 12 women. So we could have one, you know, a woman per month. And the truth is, is this year we had 46. 46 And we never women. say no to anybody. So we said, all right, we'll fit right. them in. We'll fit them into a month. And so that's a juggling and cre that's a creative <laughs> act all on itself, right? To fit Absolutely. it all in. Well, shall we talk about this year's? Yes. Because it's very, very clever. Right. And your theme is? Our theme is misrepresented. Misrepresented. Um, so part of this theme actually came out from a, there was a film that came out um, called Misrepresentation, and mm -hmm. it's just really taken off. Um, we previewed it on campus a couple of times. We previewed it right before um, this calendar. And the idea is that women are in many ways misrepresented, right? right? And so our idea was asking women, wow, why don't we take words, miss words, and ask miss words, women right. <laughs> to come up with a word that how you feel either misrepresented, missed, or dismissed in your culture or society, and to write about that. So we asked every woman to pick a word. Um, so for example, this woman said misshaped, miscast, Right, and then this was, it, we, if we could just talk right. about this briefly. Yeah, it sort of allowed us to play off to the play. idea of traditional beauty pageants, right, that honor typical conventional beauty. That's right, and so Mala, I see you have a crown oh, yes. for yourself. So, oh. we, <laughs> so you'll see in the middle here, we actually have some crowns, and I think the, the symbolism, right, of, of crowns being... Um, you know, and what, you, every woman want to be crowned. <laughs> yes, crowned queen for a day or right, something. Right, exactly. And you uh, were Miss... I was... The word is... Um, depends how you say it. Mis misappropriate or misappropriate. Okay, right. Um, and I talked about that in, in, in the calendar as, you know, I think I was very, very much raised to be very appropriate. You know, properly sexed for my gender. Um, to be, you know, to respect my elders, and I, and I absolutely am a very, have a, have a place for manners. I, I believe <laughs> that, I believe that. Um, but I think in a lot of ways, you know, women across the planet are misappropriated. Misappropriated. Right? Oh, my Used goodness. For others. Yes, and tell, tell right. me oh, just a bit of what you mean about misappropriated across the planet. Yeah, so, you know, our organization does a lot of stuff around um, bringing awareness around um, sex trafficking, um, mm -hmm. slavery, um, rape and sexual violence, and that right. certainly is a misappropriation of a woman's body right. um, and beyond her body. So I, I loved that word about growing up to be very, very appropriate and then thinking, but it's also really appropriate to step up and to stand up for social justice. Right. Um, Absolutely. Which feels really appropriate, appropriate. Uh, for me. Absolutely. Yeah. So you had your, your, I don't know, is this one yours that said, no, this said misappropriate? Yes, I, I didn't bring misappropriate tonight or misappropriate, <laughs> um, but this is another young woman's. Um, so there, there, misfit. so everyone had a, uh, as, as part of this unveiling, the, the celebration calendar. and the unveiling, yep. right? And can everyone. we say that your mother was there also? Yes, she was. <laughs> I think I embarrassed her. I think I wasn't appropriate because <laughs> I introduced her. <laughs> so um, she, but, she, but was. she was part of how you were raised to be appropriate. Yeah. And certainly I have that story too. And I will just say right now that can you say what Ma, your word I was? Would. I would say that I was Miss Demeanor, mm -hmm. and also talking about how I was raised to have perfect conduct, perfect demeanor. Mm -hmm and how that flattened me out, you know? And so there's so much that women grow up with that they then have to peel away, undo, and beyond our, our own process and our own growth, then we see, as you're saying, the social justice issues across the globe and the women who are right. having such, so much more misappropriation and, and the trafficking and, and beyond. Now, 
when you were talking about your organization, when you raise the funds, I know that it's not just for your campus organization. Right. So talk a little bit about what happens with the funds and how you do spread them around. Right. So every single year, starting in our second year, we actually have a community partner. And that community partner has a similar mission to Women for Change. So this year, our community partner was the Young Women's Empowerment Group at Watkinson School. And there, as a very similar story, these young women actually watched misrepresentation. Oh, they watched They the actually film. watched it in their class, and they went to their teacher, um, Christina Brown, at the school, and they said, we have to do something, we have to do something, we have to help, you know, women and girls on the planet. And they actually formed a group. So it was very similar to, to our experience, and they want to do things in the world, um, and we wanted to be, actually be able to support that. So what happened the night that we have uh, the unveiling, we gave 10% we gave 10 of the proceeds of the sale of the calendar, um, which is $10, and they become our community partner. So this is them, and their word was misjudged. So as a group, they actually wrote about how they feel that they've been misjudged. Um, so we, all, we are constantly wanting to support, because Women for Change is really, really big on support, that we support each other right. um, as women, Absolutely. and that we support other women and girls on the planet um, to, to do the kind of things that they want to do in the world. And certainly mm -hmm. some of the creativity that we mm -hmm. were talking about is in the layout of the pages that you do, and yeah. then <laughs> in the write-ups that every individual student and community representative uh, does, completes a write-up about their personal story. Absolutely. So if someone wants to get a calendar. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there I am. <laughs> That's right. And color and, color, and, color, and I are right, both right. on the same page. Right. And color is really important to me. So I think as, um, even though I say I'm, I'm not an artist, you know, when I, I try to put each woman in her birthday month, that's another thing, uh -huh. right? So, and all the women have their birthdays in, in their month. Um, the other thing is, is when I put them in is that I'm really sensitive to, you know, to, to the color so that it also, it looks nice. I Absolutely. mean, this is really important to me. Absolutely. Um, right. Now, if somebody wants to purchase a mm -hmm. calendar, well, how could they do that? Um, because we're a campus organization, we're not fancy. We don't have a website, so you have to email me. Okay. Or you, we do have a Facebook page. It's Women for Change. Mm -hmm. um, so the best way to get a hold of me is um, it's my last name. It's M A T A C I N at Hartford.edu. That's really okay. the best way. Or our Facebook page. Very which, good. Which you can get a hold of me through there. Very too. good. Thank you, Absolutely. Molly, so Thank much you. for bringing that in. Now. <laughs> I want to turn to you, Joe, because you were a student at the University of Hartford and you have your degree, BFA, from there in illustration, correct? So yes. you know some things about campus organizations, I would imagine. You were back there in 1999, Nine. did 1999. you tell me? Mm -hmm. And actually, a little back history on that, I went as an older student okay. and back, uh, back then and at Clinton, when Clinton was in office and they gave out a Title 13, okay. which... You know, because uh, that was during uh, that time when they were laying off, and I was able to go back to school. And I took advantage of it, and I wanted Excellent. to do something that I really enjoyed. And I always dibbled and dabbled in art. Uh, my father was a painter. He did landscaping. Oh, your father was so a I kind painter. of always say that around me. And he did sculptures, uh -huh. and he also painted my room as a kid in Disney characters. <laughs> oh, and there you go. There's a Disney you know. connection too. And so that was my Disney connection, <laughs> but. Um, Going back to that, the whole um, going into the college and getting into the whole college campus and meeting the people and having the professors give me the influence and liking what I did, you know, and saying this That's is That's hugely what I want to go important, towards. isn't yeah. it? I well, think my passion. I was able to finally do my mm -hmm. passion. It was like a second life because I came into my 30s. And, and what were suddenly, you doing before that? Um, like any typical male job, mechanic, worked in the factory, okay. you know. Uh, Real, uh, I'm trying to think, retail, you know, so forth. So I think what you're saying is very, very important for our audience mm -hmm. to recognize that creativity, meant mostly everyone could be creative, but right. sometimes right. we don't know right. it as young people. I mean, certainly that's part of what we were right. talking about with young women, not necessarily knowing they're beautiful, they're mm -hmm. creative, they're talented, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then when we have professors 
who like our work right. and really challenge us and support us. I know that's that's true for me too. And then you can blossom into an artist. And which I did. Right. You know, and uh, you mentioned Disney. Uh, at that time, I was doing an internship through the Disney stores. And I was working behind the scenes, like doing a lot of their promotional posters, like when they had their meetings and stuff. And once I got to the University of Hartford, I realized I wanted to work for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and I didn't want to be, I got an illustration degree and I came in with a graphic design degree and I wanted to be looser. Looser. Than oh. what the refineness and I wanted the, all the creation to be mine, like coming from me, coming from my thoughts and my beliefs and my likes. So Joe, yeah. for our audience, for yeah. folks who may or may not be totally familiar with what mm-hmm. is graphic design, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. is illustration, okay. and what does it mean to be looser, could you well, put gra- that into a Graphic context? design of what I was taught and the way yes. I got from it was that it had to be uh, pretty generic and simple. Like a banner, okay. you know, you get to the point, you know, and you know what it's about, and you know, from there, instead of, you couldn't go, it couldn't be as crazy <laughs> as like, you know, or, or action filled like this painting here. T- yes, talk to you know? us about the um, painting that you've well, brought in. Well, this here, it combines a lot of my, my um, likes. Um, abstract, mm-hmm. I like a lot of abstract artists. I, I like a lot of realistic artists, like Norman Rockwell, who was a big illustrated, Absolutely. you know, when he became a fine artist in the years came out, they accepted Absolutely. him as that. And Dolly, who incorporated a lot of um, unreal, realistic imagery, surreal. Right. Also, I like a lot of theater and movies. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman in here is actually a performer. Who is? And I incorporated. Sorry, but... He is a friend of mine who's a. Uh, it was an actual dancer. He's a retired oh, dancer. Yes. And I was able to use his image. You know, I asked yes. him to use his image. I liked his profile, and it went from there. Excellent. You know, and that. You know, and that's you all have... stuff. And I'm sorry, oh, but you also I, have yeah. another piece back here which incorporates what musicians that, that's and Woodstock. performers. That, that's, oh, that's it's Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that, well, for some of our audience music. who might be too <laughs> right. um, young right. to know about Woodstock, what can you tell us? Well, that's the the whole area where it goes. The the uh, Woodstock was based on freedom, the freedom of choice, the freedom of mm-hmm. to be able to be yourself. Um, and at that point, too, women we were coming out of the 50s, and they were able to no longer, they didn't have to be stuck in the kitchen. They would be able to have their own selves, to mm-hmm. be who they wanted to be. And yes, that's part 60s. of why the body itself, <laughs> I mean, the free expression, you know, it was free love. It was free to be yes. type of attitude. And also, Vietnam yes. was happening. And that was sort of a, through music to express... The, the love, the hate, the fear. Right. You know, and um, so your art has been influenced quite a bit by musicians, correct? Right. Do you have yes. the, Lou Reed here? Is, and Lou Reed, is, well, see, there, there's a, story. a little story there. My first trip to New York is when I was 12. And I'll get into Lou Reed. And Where I was were you going, coming from? Connecticut? Coming from Connecticut. Okay. I went to private schools when okay. I was younger. And it was a field trip. We're going to see Annie on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And... I love theater, so yep. it was a combination of theater and music. And there was a, there was this record shop called Rocks in Your Head, and it was in a basement. It was a <laughs> punk rock store. And was, you were twelve. And I was twelve. And the Sex Pistols just came through. Yeah. And they were playing Velvet Underground, and Lou Reed's pictures were everywhere. So from the age twelve, I was into the whole punk movement. Okay, absolutely, you know, and, and that's such a formative yeah, age, right? Yeah, and so yes. you go and get to go into the big city. My first trip to the city, and I come back, and I went from there, you know. And I kind of okay. always kept the whole performance art, you know, the the written art, the music, you know, creativity, and, and, all kind of together. And you like together. to integrate yes. the the various genres yes. that you work with. Yes. I want to, because, but because this is going very fast, right. we have lots to talk right, about right, right, tonight, right, right, I want right. to t- turn to Jerry. Jerry's your right. friend, and he has exhibited your work, or he will be exhibiting, I will be your, exhibiting. your work, she right? Yeah. Right. I'm happy to say the first of the year, 2014, Joe will be coming to the tobacco shop. 
Uh, believe it or not, it's coming quicker than I think. It's, right. it's rapidly approaching. The third of uh, January, that Friday, will be the opening reception. Oh, you'll have an opening reception. Opening reception for all of our artists. Uh, we and isn't that the wonderful thing about artists? We ha and and calendar makers, we have receptions, right? right? right. Yeah, <laughs> food it, and drink. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fun. But more importantly, I think uh, listening to what Milo was saying in regards to what right. Joe was saying as well. It's all based on passion. Uh, you yes. know, you, you have a need mm -hmm. to do something for the community, uh, mm -hmm. either locally, globally, uh, nationally, but ultimately it's all about passion. And this is what I'm looking at and hearing about right now. So as a tobacconist, how do I become uh, an exhibitor of great art? Right. And I'm happy to say it's local artists more than anything. They're local artists with a, with a host of different genres. Uh, Joe's coming in with this beautiful entertainment and... This type of uh, art, uh, we've exhibited a host of uh, four, other, four other artists as, as of uh, today. And, and you uh, started uh, approximately <clears throat> a year ago, correct? One year ago, Open, Open Studio, Studio Hartford. Hartford we, a year uh, had ago. a gentleman, yeah, had a gentleman, Richard Hawley. Okay, Richard and Hawley, I don't he's know a producer, him. Uh, but he had great art, uh, Polaroids, huge, unframed wow, of Cuba, 2001 hmm. through, through 2012. Wonderful. Just amazing, and there's a... Uh, a comparison uh, to with tobacco as an association with oh, Cuba perfect. and tobacco, but he was our first gentleman who really led us to believe that we can have an alternative gallery and show great art. And uh, so we've since had the Joe Sams and the John Frechettes and the uh, a host of other you know a few other people, and they're showing mixed media art, uh, jazz art, Andres Chaparro, oh, uh, yes, a host Andres. of good local artists, uh, and Joe Garneau will be our next. Yeah artists to come in and, uh, you know, and bless us with great work. And they're all great guys that he mentioned, too, I know. Sure. That's such a yeah. wonderful yeah. contribution, as yeah. you said, to community. Yeah. You know, we actually are near the end of the program, and so I just want to make sure we have a chance to say any last words that you want to say, but also to identify where you are. You're on Pratt Street in downtown yes. Hartford, across the street from... I'm across from Stackpole in Tryon, uh, next door to the Tamarind Grill, mm -hmm. or Edible Arrangements, uh, the professional right. barbershop. Uh, very small brick-laid street, uh, quaint in some ways. We oh, absolutely. The yeah. And there's lots going on on Pratt Street right now. The, the Hartford Prince has moved in there. Certainly and and group. The, yeah. also the optician there uh, likes, Stewart, to, prom yeah. Stewart likes Stewart, to promote yeah. the arts. Sure. And Stewart had been a student at, when I was there at Watkinson. So it's interesting what a small community sure, we're, right. we're sure. part of, and actually. We're all interested in the downtown business neighborhood right. and the community as well. That's we all right. Have something to do with the community. That's right. Yeah. And so your show will be there in January. And how yes. long will it be there, Joe? For two months. I thank you all for coming in today. And I thank my camera people and thank the West Hartford Community Television for allowing us to be here and for, uh, for us to talk about creativity and the processes of art. Thank you. This is thank Joanne you. Bauer again for Art Talks.